Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to video number 14 in Make a Game, a cool series on making a video game in Unity. Today we are just going to be doing uh, some different fixes here and there and we are also going to be playing a lot around with physics. So I just wanted to give you an overall introduction to some of the more unknown parts of the physics system in Unity. So we're not going to be scripting today, it's going to be all visual stuff. So let's delve right into it. First off, I just want to fix the ambient light because when we now open up Unity, I think that some parts of the scene are just a bit too dark and you'll see that when we start to add more models into the game. This is of course not its final graphic state. I hope to add some details to it later on. Cool, so first off, as you see here, there's quite a bit of shadow on the ball. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to turn down the sunlight and this seems weird that I'm fixing this by turning down the light but that is so we can turn up what is called ambient light to get some more fill light into the scene so we'll get uh, rid of those shadows there. So we'll do 1.3 here maybe. Let's see this in the game. That looks nice when we now pump up uh, the ambient light and you do this under edit render settings and then ambient light. So we go in here and we still want this to be a grayish color, maybe just a tiny bit blue from the sky, but that's up to you. And we'll just bump it up a bit here, like this. I think this is much better and maybe actually give it some more light from the sun still so it becomes very, very lit up. Yeah, something like zero point Actually, let's still do 0 0.4. So now it's it's very bright, everything is, is very lit up, but I really like this feeling for such a um, cartoon-like game. Cool. So what we're going to do now is we are going to, uh, let's see on the list here, we are going to fix the ball rotation. Because right now when we play the game... Wait a sec, I'm just going to bump down the music here. So it's not too loud for you. This is probably better. So right now when we play the game and we roll over here, uh, the ball might sometimes start to go in the wrong direction. See if I can get it to do it here. I might not be able to. Oh yeah, that did it. So right now it's rolling off in some of the directions that we cannot control. And that's a problem because sometimes the ball will just randomly roll off the platform. So what we can do to fix this is really easy. We simply select the ball and we use what is called rigid body constraints. So under the rigid body component, go under constraints and we can simply uh, check the different axes that we don't want the ball to either move or rotate in. So right now we are only moving um, along the Y and the X axis. So I'm just going to go ahead and check uh, Z so that it won't position itself on the Z axis. And in the rotation tab here, we are actually only rotating on the Z axis. So I'm just going to go ahead and check X and Y. And now when we play the game, we will still be able to move in uh, the same directions, but we are sure that the ball will never start rolling off. Cool. So what we can do now is we can go ahead to and uh, begin with all the fun stuff. So this uh, was the basic introduction to rigid body constraints. But rigid body con constraints can be useful for many things. And here I'm going to go ahead and show you an example. So we are going to go ahead and create a cylinder here. And this is not going to be pretty by any means. I just want to illustrate what you can do with these things. And then you can uh, come up with some nice gameplay elements on your own. So I'm going to rotate this on the x-axis by 90 degrees. And I'm going to bump this down to here. Cool. Now uh, let's uh, get some of this stuff out of the way. Here and change the... Uh, the uh, uh, positioning to global. Just move it over here. And let's maybe do two of these. 
right next to each other like this this is only to test it out so we're just going to move this closer to the center and then we can duplicate one of these platforms here and position it directly on top of the cylinder so we'll just choose both the cylinder and the platform and we'll give them a custom x value so let's see what we are going to need here something like 13.5 let's do that great and then we can just move down the platform a bit here like this this looks nice we are going to rename this to um rotatable uh tate able platform and then we are going to add a component a physics rigid body and in here we are just going to freeze some of the positions so we're just going to leave everything like it is but we're going to freeze the uh, let's see x y and z position we don't want this to move at all and then we're going to freeze the x and the y rotation so now this will only rotate along the cylinder so when we now play the game we can use this as a springboard so this gives us a lot of control over what our different rigid body components do and will allow us to create interesting physics gameplay. So please go ahead and experiment with this uh, on your own and uh, constrain it in different ways to, uh, to make the game fun to play. And you can of course also drag up the mass if you want this to be more difficult to move for the player or whatever you want to do. So this was just an overall introduction. Great, so now that we have the uh, rotatable platform out of the way, uh, let's actually just parent the... Let's see how we're going to do this. Um, let's make a new game object. Let's go to game object, create empty. And let's call this um, springboard. And then select the rotatable platform and the cylinder and let's drag them under the springboard and let's rename the rotatable platform here to just platform and the cylinder to base or axes or whatever you want to do now let's break the prefab here because we don't want this to be um, be connected to the uh, preforms, uh, prefabs from the other platforms and there's multiple ways to, to break uh, a prefab one of the ways is just to drag it down into a new one and then delete that one and it will be broken uh, here so there's multiple ways to do this I just it's a bad habit but that's the way I do it and uh, now we can go ahead and instead uh, bring down our springboard as a prefab so we can distribute this around the scene and this again it's not pretty I just wanted to show you how this can be done so now we can go ahead and delete the springboard and we might revisit it later. Great, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and create a... Um, uh, we're going to go ahead and create a joint. And uh, basically there are different kinds of joints. They are fixed, hinge and springs. There are also some others like character joints, but we're not going to look into those. So these are the three most basic joints. And they're good for different things. The fixed joint will make a game object try to position itself uh, as much as possible and then you can give it values for when it will break. The hinge, um, uh, the hinge component will be good for stuff like doors because you can give it certain axes that it will rotate around. We could, do, we could have used this spring, uh, the hinge component to do the springboard if we wanted to. Then of course there are springs, uh, which are just like they sound. You connect them to a, a certain position and uh, then you give them values for dampening and spring values and they will be uh, able to be flexed and bent, uh, but they will always try to get as close to that position as possible. So let's try to implement these and see them in action. Uh, these descriptions 
of those components are of course not um, exact, but I just wanted you to understand basically what they do. So now let's try to implement them. Of course, if you want more precise descriptions of what they can do and uh, what the different values um, uh, will, will do for these components, please go ahead and just visit the Unity scripting reference. Um, I, I try to stay away from those long and boring um, descriptions. Cool. So now let's finally go ahead and implement some of this. So let's go ahead and hit create game object. And uh, let's do a let's do a s capsule. No, let's do a cylinder. And for the cylinder, let's um, first off scale this down in the Y. So something like 0 0.2. Yeah, this looks pretty nice. And let's bring this upwards so we have some space for this. And let's call this base. Then let's duplicate this game object, move it down here, and let's scale it down on the X to something like 0 0.2 on the y to something like 0 0.3 and on the set z to 0 0.2 again. So yeah, this looks just fine. What we can do is we can move this up so that it just barely collides with our base. And uh, we can go ahead and rename this to joint. Let's do joint one actually. And let's hit add component physics and then um, let's see, where is it? Spring joint. Let's also go to the base here and hit add component physics and then fixed joint. You, here you can go ahead and add a break force or a uh, break torque uh, for when this joint will break. So how much weight needs to be applied to this before it will fall down? Since this is just floating in free air, I'm not going to do any brake force, but that's a option for you if you want to. The rigid body, we are not going to connect everything because um, if you don't, it will just try to uh, stay at the position it was in when you hit play. So basically the position you set in the scene here will be its fixed position. Now for the joint one here, we have the spring joint component. And this does a bunch of things. First off, let's bump up the spring to something like 100 because we want this to be pretty tight. Then you can tweak stuff like damper, minimum and max distance. I'm going to do max distance to something like 0 0.1 and I'm not going to make this able to break. So this should give us a pretty nice joint for our setup here. Now let's duplicate this, rename it to joint 2, drag it down a bit to here and uh, that, that looks pretty nicely. Now for our joint one, we are going ahead and connect the uh, base to our rigid body here. So under connected uh, body, simply select the base one. Then in joint two, we are going to connect joint one. And uh, should we do a third one? We can do that. So let's drag this one down. And let's connect, uh, let's first rename it actually and then drag in joint two. So as you can see, we've made a chain of spring joints. And now when we hit play, it will look like this. So as you can see, they're not fully connected, but you are able to use them just like any, uh, any reasonable chain. So that's what a series of spring joints will look like. That's of course really good for creating different gameplay elements. But instead of spring joints, let's use something else. Let's use what is called a hinge joint. And this is much more restricted in the way that it moves and behaves. You have much more control. So let hit, let's hit remove component on all three joints. Hit add component, physics, and then go to hinge joint. Now let's chain up the rigid bodies once again. So for joint one, we'll do the base. For joint two, we will do joint one. And for joint three, we will do joint two. Now select all of them again. So we can treat the parameters uh, at the same time. Now we're going to do anchor. Instead of X, 
which is the direction in which these uh, orange ar uh, arrows will point, we want to do Z. So that they will rotate only around the Z axis. So let's do one in the Z. And we can see that the direction of these uh, orange arrows has changed to the Z. Cool, the anchor, we're just gonna do Y1. That's gonna be just fine. And now let's have a look at this. This will be much better for the kind of game we are creating because first of all, they will stay much closer. They don't have that spring effect. And also, uh, they will only move along one axis. So let's now try ahead and see how this behaves. Whoops, if I can jump up correctly here and hit it. There it was. So you can see that this gives also a pretty nice effect. It might not be as realistic in the way it moves, but it, uh, it, it will do. So of course, there are, uh, there are pros and cons for both of these methods. Uh, I just wanted to show you both of them and how they can behave and, uh, and, and, and such. You can also just use the uh, uh, spring joints and then use constraints to only make them move certain ways. Or you can do some scripting. Uh, it's all up to you. It's, uh, this all becomes really fun when you start adding forces to change like this. Great, uh, then at last I'm just going to create a cube here and I'm going to move it over just so it's kind of right. Let's look at this from the Y axis here. Um, we can zoom through. Actually, let's put this into wireframe. Look at it from the Y axis from the bottom. Let's now hit this uh, cube in the middle in the top right to switch into isometric view which will allow us to position this better. Now move it over just the way you want it here and let's uh, click back on the cube again here to make uh, to change back into perspective and change back into textured. Now we can just scale this down on the x-axis to something like 0.3 and now we have a pretty cool chain that ends up with a, uh, it almost looks like a hammer actually here. So this will be, be fun to experiment with. And please go ahead and add some forces uh, through scripting. Oh yeah, of course we also need to create a rigid body, body for this. So let's go ahead and find it. Uh, where's the cube? There. Let's rename this to hammer. Let's add a physics. Uh, let's do hinge joint and let's connect the joint three and change the axes to one in the Z. So now this will behave just like the other ones and we will have a pretty nice effect. So let's see. Yes, this indeed does work. Cool. So now let's go ahead and make this into a prefab. So let's create an empty game object by pressing control shift and let's rename this to um, chain hammer thing e let's just do chain hammer and let's just move all of this under there and let's drag it down to make a prefab out of it so again we might revisit this, this later and use it but for now i just wanted to show you how it's done so let's go ahead and maybe just pull this back like it was before and let's save this out and that was pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you think that these new tools are fun to play around with. Um, of course, there are more coming out. Also, the Pong tutorial series is... Uh, I've just finished that. So now I will have time to start another one, which is really exciting. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.